ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار Beloved brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we continue insha'Allah ta'ala with the new Muslim guide. And today, alhamdulillah, we are in our sixth lesson insha'Allah ta'ala, lesson number six. And alhamdulillah, we were going through the pillars of Iman and tu'minu billah wa malaikatihi and the angels wa kutubihi, the books wa rusulihi, the messengers. واليوم الآخر um, the day of judgment والقدر خيره والشر so we left off we finished off with the messengers last week insha'Allah ta'ala and today we are moving on insha'Allah ta'ala to talk about the day of judgment and the day of judgment beloved brothers and sisters is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us is going to take place and there are many, many names for the Day of Judgment, subhanAllah. It is the day where, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he had created the angel who was going to blow the trumpet. And that during the first blowing of the trumpet, everything on the earth will perish. Except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides otherwise. Malaykum salam wa rahmatullahi and then that on the second blowing, inshallah ta'ala, everything will be resurrected and come back to life. And there are a hadith that speak that this resurrection will be just like vegetation grows from the ground. SubhanAllah. Just like vegetation grows from the ground, that all of the human beings will come back to life just like that. And that this day will be one of the most difficult of days that one day will feel like 50,000 years long. That the fear that the people will have on this day will be great and tremendous because of what they used to do, because of what they involved themselves in, because of how they maneuvered in their lives and they understand that now the truth has come to pass, meaning that you are standing to be judged before your creator, before your Lord, whether you denied him completely and said no God existed, whether you worshiped others alongside him, whether you were a hypocrite and really did not believe in him, whether you were a believer but still had many shortcomings. We'll know that now the truth has come to pass as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned will come to pass. And because of that, we'll have this fear that subhanahu rabbil azim will cause the human beings to go into this sweat. And this sweat will turn into a fog that will completely cover the believer. Some up to their ankles, some up to their knees, some up to their waist, some up to their chest, and some completely covering their head. It is the day when the sun will be drawn near. It'll be about a mile's distance. And you will feel the heat. It is the day when 70,000 angels pulling 70,000 chains will be told to bring the hellfire forth. And you will see the fire of hell with your own two eyes. It is the day when subhana rabbil azim, glory be to Allah, when the hypocrite's back will be made stiff like a board, and when the believers are told to prostrate, they will not be able to prostrate alongside them. It is the day when, subhanAllah, family members will run away from family members. يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ SubhanAllah. It is the day when a man will run away from his brother, his sister, his wife, his mother, his daughter, her son. It doesn't make a difference who it is. They're going to they're gonna run away. 
Nafsi, nafsi liom, today is about me. I can't help you. I have too much on my plate. It is too difficult for me to go on and now to try to help you. And everyone will be left to themselves completely, subhanAllah. It is the day when Allah says there is a sirat, a pathway that is thinner than a hair, sharper than a knife, has hooks that will be grabbing people and tossing them into the fire of hell as they cross over the bridge. That it will be complete darkness and the only light that they will have will be the light of iman and faith. Some will have a radiant faith that it would illuminate their path completely and they'll cross the path with the help of the malaika, the angels. Because of their iman, their belief in this world. Some will have a medium radiancy, not too bright, not too dim. Some's light will be dim, can barely see moving across like turtles, slow. Some light will work, go off, work, go off, work, darkness, light, darkness. Subhanallah. Based on their iman and the roller coaster of faith that they had. Yawmul Qiyamah, some will be given their book in their left hand. And those that are given their book in their left hand will say, Woe to me. Would that I was dust. I wish that I was turned to dust that I didn't exist. Some will be given their book in their right hand and they'll run around saying, read my book. Look what's in it. Because they'll be so pleased by the deeds and the work that Allah accepted and was kept within their book that will propel them to goodness. Meaning forgiveness in paradise. Some will stand before their Lord and their sa'iq wa shaheed. They will be driven, taken to Allah by the sa'iq and the shaheed, the witness who will be there to testify against them or for them. Because Allah said on the tongue of his messenger, Al-Qur'anu hujjatun laka aw'arik. That the Qur'an is a proof for you or against you. And that every soul goes out daily and they're either liberating their soul because of their iman or they're selling it and destroying it. Some individuals will stand before Allah and be told to confess on this great day, Yawmul Qiyamah, and they'll begin to confess their sins. Some will go into the fire of hell. Others will be pardoned and entered into paradise. On this great day, an angel will come and slaughter a ram and they will say, a voice will yell out and say, death will exist no longer. Meaning that your residence is forever wherever you are. Allah forgive us and have mercy on us. I mean. Do we understand, brothers and sisters, what forever is? Can we comprehend the length of time that forever is? In this world, we know that we're going to die sooner than later. But in the hereafter, whether in paradise or hell, that is forever. Can we comprehend that? even though we know that there will be believers or people who accepted the faith and did not live by it or practice it and they will be dipped into the fire of hell to be purified before they can enter the Jannah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nothing enters it except a qalbun salim, except a pure heart. But I don't think that any one of us wants to take not even a dip for a minute. 
as the descriptions of hell are some of the worst things that we can ever imagine. The torture and the punishment and the pain. We seek refuge in Allah from that. And we ask Allah to enter us and grant us his paradise. I mean. On this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between two people who wronged each other. Meaning that we need to be careful regarding our interaction with one another. And that the way they will pay for their wrongs are going to be with good deeds. And that the poor person will be the one who runs out and the one who begins to take from the evil of the one whom he or she has wronged. Whether that wrong was done with the hands physically or with the tongue to destroy someone emotionally or mentally. But we will pay for what it is that we've done to other human beings. Don't think that because we have gotten away with it in this world, that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is not going to hold us accountable for it, yawmul qiyamah. He's also going to judge between the animals who wronged one another. But then they will be turned to dust and perish, and the human being will say, whoa, that I was turned to dust. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us, Sari'u ila mawfiratin min rabbikum wa jannah Arduha ka ardi samawati wal ard That race to a paradise and the forgiveness of your Lord whose width is like that between the heavens and the earth between the east and the west Prepared for those who believe, those who, mashallah, have taqwa, for those who submitted, for those who obeyed. Allah says, Qū anfusakum wa ahlikum nara wa quuduhan nasu wal hijara. He says, save yourself from a fire that is fueled by men and stone. Save yourself. And then your family from a fire that is fueled by men and stone. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is warning us of the day, brothers and sisters, when we will stand in front of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala for these things. And it doesn't matter when this day is going to occur as when they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mata sa when will be the day of judgment? When will be the reckoning? When is this going to happen? He says, Ma talaha, what have you prepared for that day? Brother and sister, what have you done from the actions on your tongue, the actions on your limbs, statements and deeds, so that you're preparing for the day when you're going to meet your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, when this young man reaches your age, your hour has been established. Meaning you are in your grave, you have reached your deathbed. Your deeds have ceased, they can't go on no longer. Except those deeds that, mashallah, the slave has invested in. as sadaqah tujariya, ongoing charity that continues to work for him. A righteous child, inshallah, that makes dua for them. Knowledge that benefits while they are no longer here on this earth. What have we done to prepare for that day? Is the question that the Messenger of Allah, salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhi, posed and asked. He then goes into talking about the divine decree. And he says, what does belief in the divine decree include? He says, the belief that Allah knows everything and that he knew everything about his creation even before he brought them into being. 
50,000 years before you created, you were created, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has written everything that was going to happen in your life. And then when you were placed in the womb of your mother, Allah sent the angels to write down your deeds, your life, your wealth, whether you were going to be miserable, happy, all of these things were written when you were in the womb of your mother. And then Allah brought them into being. His foreknowledge includes their provision, their appointed life term, their words and deeds, all of their doings, whatever they conceal and reveal, those who will be admitted to paradise as well as those who will be admitted to the hellfire. The Quran says, He is Allah. Who Allah? Other than whom there is no other God. The knower of the invisible and the visible. Subhanallah. Also that the belief that he recorded everything that will exist according to his prior knowledge in the preserved tablets. Allah al-Mahfuz. As the Quran states, no misfortune can happen on earth or in yourself, but it is recorded in a book before we bring it into being. Subhanallah. But now what does this mean for mankind? What does this mean for mankind? Now that my deeds, I know that they've been written for me, does that mean that I stop working because whatever I do, it was decreed? So why put an effort? Why strive? Why sacrifice iman? Why? Because the reality is that you don't know what has been written for you. And you are carrying out your degree, decree and changing your decree as it has been written. And he says that belief in the divine decree no way implies that man does not have free will or that he cannot make his own choices and choose his actions. This can be proven by Islamic textual evidence as well as concrete evidence in the real world. The Quran says that is the day of truth. So whoever wills should take a path that leads them to his Lord, meaning it is your choice. You are not like the angels who have no free will. You have the will and the power to choose how you're going to live and what you're going to do and not do. He says, regarding man's power and will to do as he chooses, the Quran states, Allah will not force any soul beyond its capacity. It shall have the good of which it has gained and it shall suffer the evil of which it has gained. Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 286. So whatever you have gained, and this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in that beautiful hadith, if you find good, then say Alhamdulillah. And if you find evil, then blame no one but yourself. Because it was you who placed you in that condition, in that situation, in that problem. You have the ability to change, to transform your life the way you want to transform it. Is life difficult? Absolutely. Is life challenging? Without a doubt. Will it throw you obstacles? It will. But what are you going to do with what life tosses at you? That is the question. Are you going to take it on, inshallah ta'ala, and use your faith, use your Islam, use the Quran, use the Sunnah, so that, mashallah, these are weapons and tools that Allah gave us so that, inshallah, we know how to maneuver. There's no sense having weapons and not defending yourself when the enemy comes to attack. Because Allah said in the Quran, Right, that shaitan, he's an adu. He is an enemy. Take him as your arch and open enemy who is trying to defeat you in every moment in time. He told Allah wa ta'ala, as Allah said to us, Yeah, Allah, give me respite, give me time. I'm going to come to their right and to their left, from behind, from in front, from above, from below. And you're going to find that most of them are not going to be grateful. Subhanallah. Ya Allah, I'm going to attack your slaves from everywhere to prove to you that this creation that you created is not going to be grateful to you. 
He has a mission. What are we doing to pause him in his mission to defend ourselves, to fight back, to protect ourselves? What are we doing? Are we just sitting around and letting him hit us and we just are taking the beat down? Or are we engaging and using the tools so that we in this battle against the devil, shaitan, can find some success? This is what life is about. You're in a battle with an unseen being, subhanAllah, who's your open enemy and attacking you from where you can't even see. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever sat down and taken a moment to think about what does that mean? There is a thing, a creation that God created that you can't see but can see you. You're already at a point of deficiency. It sees you, you can't see it. And this arch enemy has soldiers who he has constantly attacking your marriage, your relationship with your children, your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your friends, your neighbors, your job, your work, everything that you're doing. He's making sure that he's on you like this. Ah! He got his hand on your throat trying to choke you out. But how are we combating that, brothers and sisters? Allah is telling us that we have the right to choose what it is that we want to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create us to force us to believe. He created us to choose to believe, to want to believe. And this is why it's called submission, obedience. Many times, we're not living life as if God really exists. We're maneuvering as if he's blind, as if he doesn't exist, as if he's not seeing what we're doing. <sighs> but Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala with all of that is so merciful and kind, so loving and glorious and majestic because he gives us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after, subhanAllah. Have you even thought about that? How many opportunities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and gives and gives and gives and gives and gives, gives and gives and forgives you and forgives you and forgives you. You sin, you repent, you sin, you repent, you sin, you repent. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, subhanAllah. Imagine if that was you and I in this relationship with another human being and they disrespect you and they harm you and they cheat on you and they do this to you and they do that to you and they continue. Would we would continue forgiving, 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 forgetting, leaving it alone, pardoning. SubhanAllah, that wouldn't be the case. We would be done with that individual a long time ago. We would, don't come back here anymore. I'm done with you. But Allah, Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, the most merciful, the compassionate, the king, Al-Adl, the just, Al-Ghaffar, the forgiver. SubhanAllah, he continues to give us chances. Because he wants good for us. And for those individuals who say, SubhanAllah, how can a God exist who allows all of this evil to be in the world? What about all of the goodness and all of the times that you turn against God and he still lets you breathe and he still lets you live. He still lets you eat. He still lets you drink. He still lets you enjoy. He still continues to provide for you. SubhanAllah. Allah Akbar. And we continue to turn away into disrespect and to, Ya Rabb. Shaitan, he was right. I'm going to come from the right and the left and from front, from back, from on top, underneath. And you're going to find, Ya Allah, as I attack this soul, this individual, this instance, this human being, they're going to be ungrateful. They're going to continue doing that nonsense. They're going to continue in their drama. 
And Allah told him, and I'll fill hell with you and all of them. A'udhu billahi min that. In ending, he gives us some points. And the first point is that just because Allah created the divine decree, the good and the bad, that doesn't give you the ability nor the opportunity nor the right to sin. He says, that benefits of believing in the divine decree, he gives six, and I'll read them off. He says, number one, it is one of the best incentives to act in a manner that is pleasing to the Almighty, to Almighty Allah in this life. The believers are commanded to do what they can possibly, possibly do to the best of their ability, relying upon Allah. They believe that whatever they, can, they do cannot possibly yield any results without Allah's will. Because Allah is the creator of the causes and the effects. The Prophet once said, cherish that which gives you benefit in the hereafter. Seek help from Allah and do not lose heart. If anything unpleasant happens to you, do not say, if I had done such and such, maybe it would have been a different outcome. Rather say, Qaddar Allah wa ma fa'ala. This is Allah's decree and he does whatever he wills. For the word if or only brings forth the work of shaitan. Shaitan makes you doubt in that this thing wasn't meant for you. Number two, belief in the divine decree prompts man to realize his own self-worth. And so he tries to avoid self-conceit and arrogance. For he knows that he does not know what has been decreed for him. You don't know if you're going to paradise or not. So you have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself before your Lord. Because you don't know what's your end. The arrogant person, the conceited person is the one that lives as if they know where I'm going to go. I'm going to paradise, homie. How do you know that? How do you know that? Who told you that? Who promised it to you? You don't. So we got to work every single day. Something just harder than something. We work for our money. We go work for our money because we know that money not coming. That money is not coming if we don't go work for it and earn it. Same as paradise. It's not coming, brothers, if you don't earn it and sisters. We got to work for it. He says, this makes him admit his weaknesses and need of Allah, subhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, and thus urges him to turn to him constantly. Generally, man becomes conceited when something good happens to him and becomes rather sad and dejected when something bad befalls him. Only belief in the divine decree will protect man from such arrogance in times of ease and dejection. Uh, for he knows that things happen according to Allah's decree knowledge number three belief in divine decree helps overcome the vice of envy a true believer does not envy people for bounties that allah has bestowed upon them right a true believer doesn't envy someone because allah gave them something that he didn't give you why he got to live like that why he got to be recognized? Why she got to have that type of husband? Why she got to get the good one? Why, 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 why? Because Allah decreed it. That's why. Focus on you. Don't focus on the next person. Focus on you. Maybe you're not getting that because of you envying those other individuals for what they got. Allah is not blessing you with what you're supposed to, what you, what you want to get. Not what you're supposed to get, what you want to get. He says, for he knows that is Allah who grant, has granted them such bounties in the first place 
And that envy in others is tantamount to objecting to Allah's decree. That when you envy someone, you are going against the decree of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala because it is Allah who gave them that. SubhanAllah. Number four, it fills the believer's heart with courage and strength, his determination in the face of hardship, for he knows that his worldly provision and appointed time to depart the world has already been decreed and written by Allah. That nothing will happen to him except what has been decreed. But in the same token, because we're living in COVID, in the same token, you don't say, well, brother, I, well, I got to wear the mask. If you're going to die from me, you're going to die from me because Allah wrote it for you. No, there's an issue of pr protecting yourself and tying your camel as well. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, right, the issue of tying your camel. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was approaching, he said, yeah, Rasulullah, should I just leave the camel loose and trust in Allah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no. He said, tie your camel first, then place your trust in Allah. Tie your camel first, then place your trust in Allah, right? So this shows us, inshallah ta'ala, that we are not to look at the decree of Allah, the decree of God in that way either. Like, well, let me go ahead and take my mask off. Let me go ahead and shake hands and kiss and hug and whatever, because Allah has already wrote and written what's going to happen to me, whether I'm going to die from COVID or not die from COVID, or exist and live longer than that or not, I might as well just do whatever because it's been decreed. And if I'm not going to get sick, I'm not going to get sick. Nah. The Prophet said, tie your camel first, then put your trust in, your, in Allah. And then whatever decree is meant to fall and hit you is meant to fall and hit you. Meaning put your mask on. Meaning give the pound with the fist or with the elbow. And if you shake hands, make sure you wash your hands, you sanitize your hands afterwards. That's part of tying your camel, inshallah ta'ala. And then after you've tied your camel, then inshallah ta'ala, you say, if Allah allows me to get sick, it was decreed for me. But I tied my camel and I protected myself by wearing the mask, by, wear, by, by giving the pounds, by not hugging, by not kissing, by not sharing food together. So this part of the decree is very really important to understand. right? We can't play with the decree like that. So we're balanced to the point where we don't say, well, whatever, I can do whatever I want because it's already been written. Or I won't do anything because, inshallah ta'ala, it has been written for me. Why? Because things don't happen by osmosis. You don't sit home and do nothing and then expect that a bachelor's degree is going to show up on your desk. A master's degree, a doctor's degree, and mashallah, someone is going to call you and say, Imam, I'm offering you a six-figure salary. How? What did you do for it? You got to tie your camel. You got to go to school. You got to learn. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to go out and seek the job. And then you put in the effort. And then whatever God has decreed for you is going to happen. But you have to put in that effort. And then with that effort, you put the trust of Allah wa ta'ala. And then you ask Allah that whatever you decree for me, if it happens for me, if I can achieve that thing that I wanted so bad, then walhamdulillah. If it doesn't happen for me, if I don't get to achieve it, then qadar Allah wa ma shafa'ala. Allah does what he wills and grants to whomever he wills what he pleases. And maybe that thing was not meant for me. It wasn't meant for me to go there and stay there and study there. I'll give you an example. I went to the University of Medina to be a student. I got accepted. I went there in August 2001. And mashallah, it was... The dream, a dream that most Muslims who want to be students of knowledge have. To go and study in the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and study in what is considered to be the Harvard of universities. It wasn't decreed for me to stay there. It was decreed for me to go there to learn some concepts of faith and action that I saw with my eyes and lived, not so much in the books. I'm talking about out in the society. Seeing prayer five times a day, right? How to live Islam, that that was what was decreed for me. I wasn't decreed to get my Islamic education out of the Islamic University of Medina. But Allah sent me there to fix my heart and my soul so that I can come back and be a different person. 
And then it was decreed for me to go study somewhere else and get my bachelor's degree in Islamic studies somewhere else at Michigan University. Look at how the decree of Allah works, right? But I didn't come back home from the University of Medina and say, you know what? Khalas, I tried. Allah will give me whatever knowledge he wants. No. I kept searching. I kept trying to put in work. I kept going to lectures and going here and going there and listening to this and listening to that until an opportunity opened up for me. And when the opportunity opened up for me, I didn't have the finances. And then I figured out how can I get the finances? And I went and alhamdulillah contacted people and mashallah, the finances came through. Then I was able to go study, but I work full time and I have a family. How do I do this? Then I had to go ahead and study part time, work full time, have a family, be a husband and a father full time as well. Alhamdulillah. And work around the clock with all of those things so that I can achieve what I wanted after putting my trust in Allah wa ta'ala, that he would help and aid me to do that. I'm just giving this to you not to try to show that I'm better than you or anything else. I'm giving it to you as a real life example. We want to see real examples. So you can understand how to maneuver with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember coming back from Medina, subhanAllah, and I can close my eyes. I remember it vividly. We lived in a basement apartment, me and my wife, and I can close my eyes. And when the adhan would go off, tears would run down my face because I could see the Prophet's message. I was able to see the Kaaba as if I was there. This corner and that corner and this place and that place. When I would sit here and when I would sit there. And I said, SubhanAllah, I came home and I turned that down. But I came home because I needed to take care of my family. I needed to be a man. Which was another important choice. That was part of the decree of Allah. Do I go and study and how do I provide for my family? Right? I have kids, I have child support, I have this, I have that. I had to be a man and come back and say, well, I have to sacrifice this for that. And then figure out how can I incorporate that back into my life at one point or another. Trusting in Allah in that. SubhanAllah. So that's the decree, brothers and sisters. So we need to make sure that we don't play with the decree of Allah. Because even in that case, we see men who, you know, they're lazy. They don't want to take care of their families. They want to sit around. They don't want to work. And it's like, well, if Allah, if Allah wants, I'll find me a job, Aki. <laughs> if Allah wants or if you want. <laughs> right? SubhanAllah. If Allah wants me to have Iman, I'll go ahead and I'll start praying. What do you mean? If Allah wants or if you want to pray? If Allah wants, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll start fasting one day. If Allah wants, he commanded you to do it. Or if you want, oh, one day I'll be a, a good Muslim, a good believer. If Allah wills, if Allah wants. Allah told you to be a good believer, to be a good Muslim, to strive for ihsan, for perfection, for completeness, to purify your heart, your soul. Is it If he wants or if you want. You see the decree? We can't put that in Allah's lap, in God's lap, as if he's the one that's making that choice for us. He gave us free will, as he said. And that free will is for us to choose, for us to move, for us to decide. The last two points. Belief in the or benefits of belief in the divine decree, it instills in the human being numerous realities of faith. Consequently, he constantly seeks Allah's assistance, places his trust in Allah after doing what is required of him, and always shows his need for Allah from whom he derives support to stay on the straight path. This person knows that they are in need. We are poor and in need of you, Ya Allah. And you are rich, free of all need, free of all defect. It is your aid that we seek. It is you who we worship and your aid that we seek. Guide us to the straight path, Ya our, our Lord. The path of those whom you have favored, Ya Rabb. 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين not the path of those whom you're angered with or those whom are gone astray we're asking Allah for this all of the time yeah Allah help us aid us just in Surah Al-Fatiha that we recite 17 times a day we're asking Allah for help and assistance are we realizing what we're asking Allah for because if we realize that then we know that we're in need of him subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is part of the decree. I need you, Ya Allah. I need your help. I need your assistance. Without you, I have nothing. I may think if I'm conceited and if I'm arrogant, I may think that I'm okay. I'm doing good for myself. Look at me. Look what I have. Look what I wear and look my jewelry and look at my shoes and look at my car. That type of behavior will get you thrown into the fire of hell. The person who has these things and are humble knows that they have them because Allah provided them. Because Allah gave them every penny in your pocket, every dollar, every cent, every drink of water, every juice, every soda, every meal, every breath of air that you breathe in. All of that is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we either acknowledge those favors or we don't. And Allah says, if we acknowledge them, la, la la Allah says, if you acknowledge my favors and you're grateful for them, I will increase you in more. You want more? Be grateful to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Be humble. Understand that within the decree that you need to submit, you need to give, you need to strive, you need to work, you need to humble yourself. And the last point in closing, it provides him with or her with reassurance and fills his heart with peace and contentment. For he knows that what has passed him by was not going to be fought. And he knows what has befallen him was not going to pass him by. Meaning whatever was meant for you was meant for you. But you trusted in Allah. You worked for it. And if you got it, good. If you didn't, alhamdulillah. This is why the Prophet said the believer's affairs are ajeeb. They're amazing. If he's giving good, right? He thanks and praises Allah. If he's tested, he's patient. Right? He says, Alhamdulillah ala kulli halin. All praise is to Allah for every condition and every state. If he's healthy, Alhamdulillah. If he's sick, Alhamdulillah fasbir. And he's patient. And he, supply, he supplicates to Allah, Allah help me because you are the cure. You are the curer. You are the, the one who, mashallah, relieves us from ailment. You are the one who gives us the right remedy. <clears throat> Subhanallah. So, brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, the decree is a very important part of our deen. Understanding this, that Allah has written everything 50,000 years before you were created. When you were in the womb of your mother, He wrote down your lifespan, your, when you were going to die, what you were going to look like, you know, how much wealth you were going to have whether you were going to be happy, whether you were going to be miserable, all of these things have been written down. But the fact that we don't know what has been written down means that we need to continue to work every single day. Because we don't know where we will end up, but we need to continue to strive to try to end up in paradise. And I ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all paradise. I mean, Excuse me, not sure if there's any questions, inshallah ta'ala, online or through Zoom, but you may ask them, inshallah ta'ala, if there are. If not, then inshallah ta'ala, we will end our session for tonight. Tayyib. <laughs> I don't see anything here on Zoom, alhamdulillah.
and I don't see anything on the chat. So inshallah ta'ala, may Allah tabarakah wa ta'ala bless you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa